Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 436. <laughs> Sorry, the number keeps getting to me. Um, and talk today is how much love can you stand and have you tested? I'm going to go a roundabout way to get to what I'm talking about, but I want to start with something that may be provocative and may start you thinking. So, welcome, thanks for joining me. Before I start with the topic, let me introduce myself and the overarching theme so you know where we stand. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. Um, I'm a little bit schwitzy right now because I've got back from a very warm bike ride because it's hot here and I just need to get out of the house and ride because I've been working so much for the last five days on my computer and it's like, get out, go ride, do something playful. So I did. So, my name is <laughs> Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless otherwise announced, I do a Facebook Live initially that then goes onto YouTube and onto my podcast in case you're watching or listening there, called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And as of today, I'm at episode number 436. I know if you listen to the podcast, if you listen to this one, it's been months since I did it because I've only got like 10 a week going up or 10 a month going up lately. Got to catch up. So the topic today is how much love can you stand and have you tested? It may sound very trite to say that actually is kind of tried to say that and what I'm aware of is many of us and I include myself in this because I went through this myself have an upper limit of how much love we can receive I have an upper limit to how much love we can experience and so when someone loves us more than that we can feel drowned now the reality speaking metaphorically metaphysically and spiritually speaking is love is an infinite resource for us and for everybody else. So if somebody loves you that infinitely, it should be adding to what you already have, which is infinite. That makes sense? That may be too esoteric, so I'll break it down so we have some nuts and bolts to work with. Being loved is not as easy as it sounds for all the people. I did a talk last week, week before, about the wounds we carry, and that's part of what the challenge is, is that when you are feeling that you can't receive the love, oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes, the amount of love that you receive can only be up to a certain amount before it becomes painful. Because what's happening is the love that's being given to you is touching into places where you're tender and sensitive from past wounds, past beliefs, past um, experiences that are painful. From loving relationships, from parental relationships, from family relationships, from other places in history where love was important and there was a pain associated with that because of a trauma, challenge, abuse, behavior, something happened that basically shut you down. And if you haven't dealt and resolved that, when someone loves you, unconditionally, romantically, however that is, once they start filling up your love tanks, as it were, they start loving you more and more and more, you're gonna hit this limit where you can't go any higher without facing that pain. You can go higher, However, for most people, the pain is speaking too loudly. So in fact, there is no way that they can actually take that love in because it, hurt, it hurts too much. Now, the reality is the love doesn't hurt, but what it's touching on does, and that is where the work is. If you are someone who has been in this journey of relationship after relationship after relationship and haven't done any healing work, intentional healing work in the interim, it's quite likely, it's quite likely that you've got some scar tissue, shall we say, built up inside emotionally speaking, that is giving you a place of resistance to love more. And in fact, when someone loves you that clearly, the scar is kind of, um, actually it wouldn't even be a scar. I'd say it's, it's a raw wound in a way, because the truth is when someone loves you that much, it hurts. A scar can just be like a nudge, a reminder. But for most of us, when someone loves us to a certain limit, we hit this ceiling where above that is too painful because the wound is too deep. And truth is that wound never heals, so it won't be scar tissue. It'll just be a, I'm trying to be polite without being crude about it, because I was thinking about saying a rotting sore, but that sounds horrible, so I'm not gonna do that. But bottom line is it's painful, and it's an unending pain that's not resolved. So, what I wanna to speak to is how to solve, resolve, change, transform, and take that upper limit off so you can love fully and feel love fully, because you deserve it. And any of those wounds from the past are not yours to carry for your whole life. Let me be clear about that. Those wounds that you may have been inflicted with or experienced or had applied 
or immersed in somehow are not your baggage to carry for life. No matter how traumatic it feels, no matter how, how you've been told or rules or limits, or whatever else, it's not the truth. You are free to put it down. Now comes the part about how. Because if you know, which I trust you do, there is an upper limit to how much love you can receive, then you know there's work to be done. Now, I'm gonna give you some clues based on my training, my background and what I teach. So knowing that if you wanna go deeper, you might wanna seek me out, but I'm not saying you have to. And I do have an ulterior motive to let you know about something as well, so I'm letting you go ahead of time. <laughs> Cards on the table, but you know, nothing up the sleeves, no sleeves. Um, <laughs> so your opportunity with this place of upper limit is the opportunity to face those past wounds and the history that you have embedded inside and rewrite it. Now, sounds so, yeah, sounds so easy, just write it on a piece of paper and cross it out. Not quite as simple as that, but what I mean by rewriting is to do the inner work, guided however you do that, to find those wounds inside, because those wounds are nine times out of 10 tied to judgments about guilt, resentment, grief, or pain, where you judge yourself based on it. It's like those pains happen, the wounds, the grief, the hurt, the wounding, all those things, but it's that judgment that locks it in place, the way I believe it. So, first of all, is to discovering what the judgments are that limit you. Secondly, is it to do some inner work, emotionally speaking, to let that emotion up and out, to free it up. And thirdly, and this is the big one, you do some forgiveness. By forgiving yourself for those past wounds, those past beliefs, those past rules, because I can guarantee you, if you're carrying those wounds inside, and you're feeling them, you're carrying some self-recrimination some sort of judgments against yourself that are limiting your ability to love more. And again, you deserve as much love as you want. So any limits you're putting on yourself are unneeded. But you may be justified because of what you went through. But is that really where you want to live? So do the work that allows you to discover the judgments to release the emotional upset and the pain inside and to do the forgiveness work so then you can love more fully and receive love more fully. I'm making this very simple, but it's a lot more difficult than that in terms of most people's resistance and emotional walls are up very high. But I'm letting you know the instructions very simply so you can do it yourself. Go do it. Yeah, easy. I know it's not easy. Through the two years of programs, two years of the master's program I went through, we went through a lot of this and I really went deep in my own healing and transformation work and it wasn't done in an instant. It went pretty quickly, but it was over several sessions in the program I was in. So I know that it's not easy work, so I'm not playing light with it, but I'm just making it clear that it's not that hard. I should say it's not that complicated. It's simple but it can be hard to do, I understand. Now, one more piece I want to add to the end of this, because this, this is kind of the, um, well, my artery motive, <laughs> but also a simpler, easier way for you to learn to love yourself so that your love can start healing those wounds yourself. Because part of the healing work is really to have compassion for yourself, the love for yourself. Now, one of the shortcuts that I've learned, and it's a shortcut in a way, is in your own life, in your own space, in your own time, to apply loving to those wounds inside. You know, there's an old saying from my master program, not an old saying, but it's a quote they used to say, that healing is the application of loving to the places inside that hurt. Like I said it again, healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. So if you love yourself and do self-love practices, and I'm gonna to get to that in a second, then by doing that loving work inside, you start to resolve, melt, dissolve those wounds that you have inside. Yes, there's deeper work to do with forgiveness as well and other things as well, but by loving yourself, it's like you soften up the resistance and you also um, start to reduce the pain and suffering inside. I happen to have, how can we incidental? I'm being facetious, but it's true. A self-love um, book and an audio that I created, that I created this past week and a half, or actually past the last three months, but it came together this week and literally launched yesterday. So it's brand new. And it's a 30 page, description of how to do this, including the steps to go through, as well as two audio tracks, a morning and evening meditation that will take you through the self-love practice. I feel that if you do that program, that it's not a program, do that practice, if you do that every day for 30 days, morning and evening as I lay it out, at the end of the month, it's kind of like you, if, let me say this way, if you've ever started yoga or some other health practice when you never did it before, it can take a long time for you to get loose enough and comfortable to be that flexible. For most people when they do yoga for the first time, they haven't done other, some other gymnastics or flexibility work beforehand, it can take a few practices, a few, few sessions, start getting loose enough to do the stretching and do the full movements. 
If you do self-love, the practice I recommend through, through what I'm offering, every day for a month, morning and evening, at the end of 30 days, you'll be way more flexible in your emotional expression. You'll be way, way more fluid in your ability to access yourself, and you'll be way more, way more capable of receiving love to a higher degree than you did before. Yes, the wounds may still be there, but they will carry less weight. And the truth is, as you do more and more of this self-love, those wounds will start to dissolve. It's almost like putting them into, like, wash, like washing them off gently with love. By loving yourself fully, and there are some things I recommend in the practice, I talk about um, body issues as well, but you can apply this, if I'll say this, the body issue part that's in the, in the practice that I recommend, or I offer, you can translate that from body issue to emotional issue. You can transfer, translate it to um, emotional judgment of what you did in the past. So you could take that practice and shift it very easily. So what I offer, I recommend using for anything that's upsetting you, because it will change the way you relate to yourself and allow you to love more and receive more. And doesn't everybody want that? To love more and receive more love? Because that's really what I think being on the planet is all about, is having more love and expressing love. Because that's a cool thing to do. Which is why I've got this self-love, which is a self-love mirror meditation practice that I offer on my website. So, so you can run up and go and get it now, because I know you're excited about it. <laughs> my website is my name, which is barryselby.com. Well, my name isn't .com, but you know what I mean. So barryselby.com slash self-love that simple if and it's all one word self-love by the way if you want to go to my website and check out my other stuff i do have my discovery session my online programs my coaching everything else that's barryselby.com and the self-love practice is in the menu i've already put it up there so you can go get it now if you want to do that but i want to make sure you take this to heart regardless of the doing my doing my practice or not you deserve more love than you've got i suspect and you can open up to receive more than you've been given you get to decide you get to decide how much love you're allowing in and if you want to raise that ceiling it's up to you you do that it's, it's not necessarily easy to do mentally but on an emotional level when you must start freeing up that room and you start healing and letting go of those past wounds you can love more if you're in a relationship it will transform what you have if you're single it'll provide you a place to love more and attract more love into your life and I think either way that's a good thing so I hope this is making sense and that I think is about it I want to make sure you got this point because it's a simple thing but it's powerful and truth be told it's a thing most people miss so don't be one of the mass majority who forgets to love themselves take the extra steps now love yourself if you want my want my um, self-love practice get it because it will help you out level fast easily and in 30 days will change your life and by doing so you're welcome to love into your life and for that I wish you well um, if you want help as well in the area of love and relationships, on my website is a Let's Chat on the left-hand side of the menu. Sign up there on my calendar. We have a free talk, and I can help you get some clarity and get some guidance. And that's really it. I want to make sure you got this message out because it's been bugging me for a while. And even though I did a couple of talks this week about self-love, I wanted to speak from the angle of understanding why self-love is important. And I think this explains it clearly. So with that, I wish you well. I do these talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, by the way. I did it on time today. I'll be back in tomorrow, Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific time for another talk. If you want help, reach out to me. I recommend getting that um, self-love practice because it works. <laughs> it's so simple, yet it's so simple. Yeah, it works. And if you want to reach out, and, if you want to, if, and by the way, if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below, either on Facebook or YouTube. Podcast, you can't do it, you'll be hearing me. But um, I appreciate you watching, appreciate you being here, and I'll see you again tomorrow.